All right, guys, welcome to the financial sector. So this is unit four, savings, investment, and the financial system. So let's start off by re-looking at sources of long-run economic growth. I think this is probably maybe the, at least the second, if not the third time in this course, we look at what causes the economy to grow in the long run, which is obviously of vital importance. So we have increases in human capital and increases in physical capital and probably the next slide will say increases in technology. So human capital, skills, knowledge of the workforce. So how do we increase our human capital? Well, by better education and also by population growth. Um, not that that necessarily increases the skills and knowledge, but it gives us more workers. So um, that also, and hopefully they're bringing different skills and different knowledge with them also. Um, so we have human capital, the one that we're going to focus on in this unit specifically will be increases in physical capital. Remember that physical capital is referring to goods that are used to make other goods and services. So we're talking about machinery, um, factories, um, tractors, tools, things like that. Um, and the key of why that matters in this unit, because we're talking about the financial system, is how do we pay for those things, for that physical capital? Well, it's financed by investment spending. Um, and again, this is at least the second, if not probably the third or fourth time that that statement has come up as well. And so here's a really important statement that investment spending is what finances long run economic growth when it comes specifically to increasing our physical capital. So it is going to be hugely important. So, well, there you go. There's your definition for investment spending, spending on new physical capital. Um, what matters in this unit? is how much does it cost to engage in investment spending um, and that's going to be determined by the interest rate um, so this unit a lot of it is about what makes interest rates go up and down and how that will then affect the economy as a whole so the interest rate we're going to say is the price of money and again that's probably a different concept to think about money costing something but it really does um, if you want to take out a loan for a thousand dollars let's say and the interest rate is 5% um, or the interest rate is 10%. Well, if the interest rate is only 5%, then that loan is cheaper. So the price of borrowing um, that $1,000 is cheaper than if it were 10%. So an interest rate really is a price of money. So why does that matter? Well, this is pretty much uh, common sense. But if you have a higher interest rate, we are not going to borrow as much. And remember that borrowing is the way that investment spending is primarily financed. So most companies don't just build a new factory with money that they already have. Or most businesses don't begin their business with money they already possess. They usually have to borrow that money. So when the interest rate goes up, we're gonna have less investment spending because it's more expensive to borrow. When the interest rate falls, we're going to have more investment spending because it's cheaper to borrow money. And again, remember that this investment spending is going to have a direct impact on how much new physical capital we have, which has a direct impact on our long run economic growth. So these things are very closely related to each other. All right. So um, again, how investment spending is financed, we have something called the savings investment spending identity. And it's very simple. It sounds complicated with all those words. It is just basically a proof that savings is equal to investment spending. S equals I. Um, and this is saying mathematically, the amount of savings that an economy has is going to be equal to its investment spending. Um, so what this means is that when you save your money, and this has to be that you are saving it in a bank or some kind of financial institution, saving under your bed or in your mattress, under your mattress doesn't count because nobody can borrow that. But the basic idea is that you save your money in a bank and then the bank can lend out that money to people for investment spending. Um, so savings will be equal to investment. They cannot lend out what has not been saved. All right, now government spending is also going to influence this as well. Um, we have three terms here. There's just a little bit of vocab the next couple of slides. Uh, we have budget balance, surplus, and deficit. These are pretty basic. Um, Budget balance is the difference between tax revenue and government spending. So we can say that we have a positive budget balance or a negative budget balance. If it's a positive one, then that would be better known as a budget surplus. Um, but just be aware you might see it as a positive budget balance. 
Surplus, we had this back in the late 90s and 2000. Um, tax revenue is greater than government spending. Obviously, we haven't seen that in a little while. Um, budget deficit, we are more familiar with budget deficits these days, and you can see on this chart since 2002, um, the huge deficits that we've run, they're actually a little bit smaller now than they were. Um, that's probably surprising to a lot of people. Um, but either way, deficit, tax revenue is less than government spending. All right, so why does that matter? Well, because we have this term called national savings. So it's not just money that people are saving, it also includes the budget balance. So national savings is the total amount of savings in the economy. And it is equal to private savings, so that's what regular private citizens save, plus the budget balance. In our case, in the United States since 2001, we have run a negative budget balance. So that would actually be adding a negative number. So when we say that savings equals investment spending, it's not only private savings, it's national savings. So the government, when they borrow, they are actually taking away some investment spending. When the government is spending more than they're bringing in, when they have a, a budget deficit. So our number right now, private savings is a positive number, budget balance is a negative number, so our investment spending is less than private savings. Um, but it is still equal to the national savings because it has to be. All right, how do we define private savings? Again, this is just a recap of old stuff. Disposable income minus consumption. Um, that's pretty much it. We've done that before. So that's everything left over. We either save or consume from our disposable income. So that's private savings. There is another source of savings as well, and this would be through capital inflows and outflows. So capital inflows, um, that's the net inflow of money or funds into a country. Um, so, and this is something we're going to get into a lot more when we get to um, international trade and to an open economy uh, section. In this unit, we're going to mostly view the economy as closed. But the basic idea is that money sometimes comes into a country from somewhere else, foreign savings that can finance investment spending. So people from another country, they might spend, or I'm sorry, they might save their money in the banks of another country. So somebody from Portugal or Greece or Italy, countries that have weaker economies, they might choose to save their money in an American bank. And that's going to be money that we can use for investment spending here. Outflow funds, just the opposite. It would be where Americans save their money in other countries. Um, so that would be domestic savings that finance investment spending in another country. Like I said, in this unit, we're not going to focus on this one too much. We will do this later in the course. So to recap, investment spending is financed by private savings, the government budget balance, which when we add those two things up, that's going to equal our national savings, and also by capital inflows. So that's where we can get our investment spending from. This has been a Lumani production.